chapter number one. Uh, get me down just a hair on this, Dylan, if you don't mind, please. Appreciate that. Second Corinthians chapter number one. One of the greatest verses in the in the New Testament for Christian, as far as I'm concerned. Um, look at verse number three. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. What does God do? Verse 4, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Man, you ought to get a hold of that, y'all. Grab that verse and, and hang on to it. Believe it. Remember it. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. You know what that means? That means you let God comfort you in your trouble and you can help others in their trouble. And with the same comfort, he, you're supposed to behave toward others just like God behaves toward you. That's right. And so I want to use that bottom of verse three there this morning and I want to preach on the God of all comfort. Now I want you to give me attention this morning. This is to a special group of people in here today. I don't know who it is, but I guarantee you there's probably 50 people in here today who really need what I'm getting ready to say. And the others, all the rest of you, will need it sooner or later. All Christians come to a place in their life where they need the comfort of the Lord. The loss of a loved one, death in your family, a disease, cancer, a divorce, a desertion, layoff slip, bad report from the doctor. These things are not, it's not if, it's when. Every person in here will face some of these things and maybe more than one of them in your life. And when you start, uh, just it seems like just when you think everything's going good, some kind of tragedy will hit in one way or another. And so I want to talk about God comforting you. And we hear a lot about God's goodness and God's wrath. God hates sin and will one day judge sin. But I'll tell you something else about God. He's good. And he loves you. And he's a good God this morning. Don't you believe these crazy people that always saying, well, if God's so good, why does he let this? The reason all this stuff's going on is the devil. Don't blame God for the bad stuff going on in this world. You can blame that on the devil and us. It's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. So I want to preach this morning about how the Lord comforts you. I don't know who you are today, and it might be something that's just happened this week, but it's on my heart today to tell you the Lord wants to comfort you and to help you through whatever you are hurting about or going over. Number one, he comforts us through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You see the stories that Jesus, the Bible records about Jesus in the Bible. In Mark chapter 4, there's a man there in the synagogue. Remember that now. In the synagogue. That was their, their Jewish temple. There was no doubt hundreds, maybe even thousands of people that were there. There were the scribes there in their long flowing robes like with a suit and a tie. They were all dressed up. There, everybody come in. And, I, and there was a man there that day that had a withered hand. I don't know if it's something from his birth or he'd had an accident. Uh, maybe something crushed it. My cousin up in West Virginia, Donnie, I, I think I might have told you about the other day. He works in the coal mines and has done for many, many years. He was down in the coal mine the other day and he was in, uh, I think, 46 inches. They call that 46 inch coal. That, that's this high where you go down in a hole, about a mile down in the ground. They got to eat their lunch laying on their side. Can't even stand up all day long. Pit, how would you like to have a job like that? 
And that's why people tough, buddy. And, and Donnie, he worked there all his life. And the other day, there was some, a machine come up and hit him and crushed his arm against the coal jagging out in the, broke his arm in seven places. Uh, seven clean breaks in one arm is a lot of break. And I talked to him the other day. I said, man, you all right? And uh, he said, yeah. He said, I'll send you a picture of my arm. I said, you do that. And uh, I, I, he wants me to send him some CDs and DVDs to watch while he's got time to recover. But I'm telling you, that's a messed up arm. This man might have had that. Maybe it was from an accident. I, I, maybe it was born but anyway, he had a withered hand. Now you think about this now. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say, people. This, this is worth coming to church for, what I'm getting ready to tell you right now. Jesus in the midst, he's, he's the son of God. All the religious people in the, in the whole country was there, milling around, talking, shaking hands. There he is. What's he going to do today? You know what he done? He, he left the, uh, the pilot. He left the high priest. He left all them and went right over to this guy Amen. with that withered hand and got down and healed him. You know what that tells me? You know what that tells me? That tells me the Lord right here this morning. You know who he's really wanting to help? You that are hurting right here today. Amen. That's who he wants to help. That's Jesus, brother. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the Jesus of the Bible. We see him all the way through the Bible. He says, stretch forth your hand. The maniac of Gadara. The, the, the storm, the, when, they were, when they were out on the storm that night and, and the waves were tossing to and fro and the, the ship was going sideways and they thought they was gonna die. You know what they did? They looked up and they didn't see Jesus going over there to a religious meeting or a steakhouse. They saw Jesus walking on the sea coming to where they were, the ones that was in trouble. Lord, that tells me something about him. That tells me that he that tells me that he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That means, brother, he knows. Listen, there's people sitting in here this morning, you can't even talk about what's going on. It's hurting you so bad you don't know what to do. Nobody even knows it. You're ashamed to tell me, but I'm telling you there's one in heaven that knows what you are having to go through today, and hallelujah, he'll be there to comfort you. He is the lovely Lord Jesus Christ. He cares about you. Hallelujah, glory to God. I've had him do it to me before. How about you? I've had him comfort me when I was down. Many of you have heard me tell the story how that I've, I've been down before. I've been down, and I'm, I'm a pretty hard person to get down. I, I really am. I'm 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 stay usually upbeat and look on the good side of stuff, but I have been down. And I've been down before and I've been laying in the bed at night and I think, God, what am I gonna do? God, how am I gonna make it? And about that time, something somebody just speak to me and, and say, fear not, Danny. <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, that's like the Lord just comes to you. Amen. Have you ever had that happen to you? I'm telling you, he comforts us through the world of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody ever cared for me like Jesus. Old Charles Wagle wrote that song and uh, he was a preacher and his wife left him and that, that old boy was a great man and he came in one day and he found a note on the table and said, I don't love you no more. I don't want to be no preacher's wife. Uh, you'll never see me again. I'm gone. And buddy, that man began to cry and he went and sat down and wrote these words. And he played and play on the piano. It's comforted millions of people. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus since I found in him a friend so kind and true. I'd love to tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that nobody else could ever do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. No one ever take the sin, sin and stain away from me like the Lord. He comforts us through the work of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, the Lord comforts you through the work of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 15 and verse 26, as a matter of fact, the Bible calls the Holy Ghost the Comforter. The Comforter. What? That's one of the names of the Holy Ghost. He comforts us through the work of the Holy Ghost. Amen? He said one time this man, um, George Mathlin, actually, uh, he was uh, engaged this woman, and he, him and her was really looking forward to getting married, and uh, he was um, losing his sight, and he got some kind of disease that made him lose his sight, and he's going blind. And he finally sat her down one day, and he said, Honey, I love you. I know you love me. I'm looking forward to being married, 
But he said, I thought it, it, it wouldn't be right if I didn't tell you this. I'm, I'm going blind. I'm losing my sight. And that changed everything. And she looked at him and she said, I can't marry a blind man. I just can't. And backed out and broke his heart. And he thought, what am I going to do? Going blind, lost my bride. You talk about change of life. You're all, everything's great and you're excited about getting married to no marriage, no wife, and no sight. And he said during that time, the Lord, the Holy Ghost began to deal with him, speak to him. And just like, like when I was telling you a minute ago about me laying in the bed, I lay in the bed and I'd, I would say, Lord, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it? And I'd turn the radio on. And I don't know if the Spirit of God I got on the DJ or what, but the McCameys were singing that song back then, uh, God on the mountain is still God in the valley. And I turned that radio on and buddy, they come on singing that. And even though I was hurting, my heart was broke, I thought I was gonna die. It felt like somebody's turning flips on the inside of my heart. I said, "Woo! glory to God. He's God on the mountain. He's God in the Let me tell you something this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, let me tell you something this morning, people. I got good news for you. Listen, when we're shouting, he's God. And when we're crying, he's God. Hey, man. I mean, when, when, we're, when our hearts tore out, he's God. Uh, when, when everything's going great, he's still God. And when you ain't got a dime to pay your bills and you don't know what the duck say, hallelujah. He's still God, people. I'm glad that he's still God, amen. Hallelujah. I need my tennis, I need my tennis shoes for this. These are too slick. I'm telling you something, brother. He's God on the mountain, and he's God in the valley. He'll comfort you through the work of the blessed Holy Ghost of God. This modern day brand of Christianity that makes people feel like that every, once you get saved, everything's going to be wonderful and great. And well, that's a bunch of junk. There's valleys. There's burdens. There's heartaches. Jesus was acquainted with grief and sorrow. Brother, this life ain't all fun. There's battles. There's battles. But I'm telling you this morning, he comforts us through the work of the Holy Ghost. One of my favorite songs in here is He Abides. I'm rejoicing night and day. As I walk the narrow way, for the comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. He abides with me today. Uh, at home, we've got this uh, big old thing on our, on our bed, it's, it's a, call it comforter. And that thing is outside, 100% cotton, inside, goose down, Goose feathers, warmest thing you can ever get your hands on. Why do you think God put them things on gooses, geeses, geese them? So they can float around out there in that water and it almost freezing and stay warm. And boy, we, I, I, I like to, uh, I like to uh, keep it cool in the room I sleep in. I don't see how somebody sleeps in a hot room. But, uh, you know, whatever. Well, somebody opened the door on me yesterday and the heat hit me like that in the face and it smelled like kerosene. And I thought, Lord have mercy, I don't see how y'all live in that. I like, you're better off to keep it cool. You won't get sick so much. And uh, uh, they, I, I get that thing and we gotta leave it up a little bit because of the Frankster. But, uh, uh, but other than him, I like it cool. And boy, you know, your arm will be sticking out. Your foot will be sticking out. And you know, I don't know why, but sometimes you go to bed and your feet's real hot and you stick them out and then it gets cold and the other way around. Sometimes they're, they're cold and then you start burning up. It's weird, isn't it? Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. If you wake up and it's cold, all I have to do is pull that thing up on me. That comforts me. That comforts me from the cold air, from the cold elements. I got a, a jacket or two like that too with those goose feathers in it. Man, that stuff will keep you warm. It's no accident that the Lord said the Holy Spirit was the comforter. It's a cold world we live in, y'all. It's a cold world. Listen, if you think this world cares about you, you're, you've lost your mind. The world don't care about you. Even those Hollywood movie stars, 
That Hollywood don't really care about them. They'll use them to make, get rich off of, and as soon as they get some wrinkles or some gray hair or something, they'll just get them on and get them somebody else to take their place. That they, this world don't care about you. This world don't care about me. It's a cold world out there. Thank God you can wrap up in the comforter, the blessed Holy Ghost of God. Amen. Yes, sir. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. They said one time, Jesus said, uh, if I go to the Father, I'll send the comforter to you. And my pastor always said, well, he must have made it back because the comforter came. And when he got there, he sent the comforter to me and you. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. Number three, let me say thirdly this morning, he comforts us through his word. He comforts us through his word. In Matthew chapter nine and verse two, Matthew chapter nine and verse 22, in Mark chapter 10 and verse 49, in John 16, all through the Bible, all through the Bible, if you're going through a terrible time, if your husband has done you wrong, if your wife has left you, if you're going through separation, divorce, if, you've, if you're having cancer treatments, I mean, if, you're, if you've lost your, your mate, like Miss Barbara sitting over there, lost hers about a year ago, just a little over a year now. Brother, when them times come, you need the word of God to comfort you. Amen. 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 Listen, no matter where you go in this old world, how many people do you think has been just about ready to blow their brains out in a motel somewhere? Or maybe just take a break the liquor bottle and cut their wrist or their throat with it. And about that time looked over there, opened that drawer and there laid a Gideon Bible. And they looked out there and said, maybe there's something in this. And a lot of you opened up the front of it and it said, hope for crises, hope for, you know, broken hearts, stuff like that. There's no telling. There's no telling. Buddy, listen, when, when people are hurting and they're in trouble, they, they ain't not looking for Playboy magazine. They're looking for that book right there. <laughs> Buddy, when, when everything blows up and you don't know what you're going to do or which way you're going to turn, it's not some old wicked, ungodly book out there in the world. You're not looking for an evolution book. You're not looking for a book on, uh, on, uh, on uh, philosophy. You're looking for the word of God to comfort you, to comfort you, to comfort you. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, he comforts us through his word. Amen. Years and years ago, I read about, I read about this man that went trapping in the snow. And the snow was a foot deep and didn't have no phone, no radio, no, 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 no TV, no contact with the outside world. And out there, lost, snow that deep, can't even get out, Open the Bible. And the Bible spoke to his heart. The Word, brother, the Word was all people had back then. I think of my mom, raised up there in spruce pine. And mom said when they were little, they, daddy, her daddy, my grandpa, would have to go come down that mountain and either go to Marion or come down here to get flour and supplies and it'd snow and he'd be gone for a week or two, couldn't get back up there with a horse or a, or a wagon. And she said that they, she thought they was gonna freeze to death. And her brothers, nine, I think I had nine kids at home at that time, 10 or 11 of them all together, would catch birds. And I've heard of them having to take an ax and, ch and chop up some of the two befores in the walls and throw them in the fire, keep them freezing to death. Because all the wood outside was either buried under snow or soaking wet. You see, this modern generation, you think you're pitiful if, you, if, you're, if your air condition goes out for one day. But I mean, the, the one right before us, them people had it rough. They said, they, I've heard them say, they said, well, I, the snow would come through the cracks when the wind would blow hard and be laying, laying on the bed, the cover. When they get, you put your foot on that floor, it's like solid ice. And ladies and gentlemen, them old people, they didn't have TV. They didn't have, they couldn't turn on Dr. Phil and, and The View and, and see some junk from Hollywood and sit there and entertain themselves and drink beer. They had that book. They had this book right here. 
and brother, they would sit down and my, my grandma would gather the kids around the fire and she'd open that book and read that book and pray. Listen, brother, that's what'll comfort you when everything else has gone out the window. When everything's gone and you ain't got nothing else, that book right there will be there to comfort you. He said one time, uh, uh, this boy had lost his hand in an accident. He lost his hand like that, you know, and, he, and, and he's gonna be like that the rest of his life. And they said, they said, well, son, we're gonna have a preacher come see you. He said, I don't wanna see no preacher. God, look what God did to me. I don't like this. I, why, why do I need to see a preacher? I don't wanna see no preacher. And they talked him into it, and the preacher came. And when that preacher came, he only had one arm. And he said as soon as he seen that preacher with one arm, he changed his attitude. Hey, what happened to you? How did you learn how to do everything one-handed? Why? Well, you know, and he said immediately. Now, that's what that verse said. That verse says God comforts us so that we can comfort other people. And, you know, that thing that God let you go through that you got mad about and you thought, why did God let me go through? You know why he done that? So you could touch somebody else's life. And, and if they only have, so you can help a bus family. So you can help a bus kid that knows what it, listen, if everything was right all the time and everything went your way, we, we'd be meaner than snakes. God lets us go through times of trouble and heart so that we can put our arm around. Listen, I, I, can, go down, I can go down to the funeral home Somebody's lost their mom, and I put my hand on their shoulder and say, I know exactly how, how you're feeling. Guy said his daddy died of a heart attack. I said, my dad died of a heart attack. Somebody wrote an email the uh, other day, and they said, Brother Danny, I had no idea we had so much in common. My mother died just like yours did. Well, that's why God allows things to come in our life, so that we can help others Amen. that are having the same problems that me and you, and the Lord uses us to, con con to comfort other people. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. A lot of these little hot shot preachers come out here and they've been, been saved three years and preaching two. They ain't never been through nothing. A lot of times they say some mighty dumb things. But I, that's why the Bible said a pastor can't be a novice, somebody that's young in the faith. If you've been through a few things, fought a few, few battles, I'm not talking about book learning, I'm talking about life. Dealing with every kind of situation, every sin imaginable. Every kind of mess you can think of, family problems, burdens, all kinds of things. Thank God he'll comfort you through the word of God. And that's exactly what this is doing to you this morning, comforting you. Number four, he comforts us through his children. And I just got through saying, brothers and sisters, one night years ago, and I hardly ever do this. I probably count on one hand the times that I've done this. I'm a lot like my daddy. Daddy, daddy never talked about his problems. He, I never heard him complain about. Now, mom did. She worried about the bills all the time and everything. But if, if my daddy ever worried, I, you couldn't tell it. And I'm like that a lot of times. I just keep it in. I think, well, Lord help me, Lord deal with. But there's one night I was coming home from revival, and I was having some of the worst problems I'd ever had in my life. Bad as you can. I mean, you just bad as you can imagine. And I drove, driving home through tears, crying. And I remember one time coming home, I thought, I don't know if I can handle this. And I thought about one of my friends. He's a preacher friend, a good preacher friend of mine that went to our church in Marion. And I cut off the interstate and went the other way and went to his house and knocked on the door. He opened the door and I said, brother, I'm sorry to come in on you this late at night. I just need somebody to talk to. He said, come on in, Brother Danny. We sat down in there, and, and we just talked. And we just sat there, and he got down the floor and prayed with me. You just don't know. See, you know how God comforts you? He comforts you through brothers and sisters. If you've got somebody that you can call that will pray for you when, you're, when you need it, you ought, you're a rich person. You ought to thank the Lord for that. If you've got somebody you know will pray when you ask them to, if you've got some, that's why it's important to have a church family. These people say, oh, I can live just as good at home. They're missing all of this. They're missing all of that. You, you know, it's important to have a church family and be a part of it and grow together and, and learn together and comfort each other. And then when your turn comes, they'll comfort you. Listen, that guy's 
that guy's turn did come. His house burnt down. And I got to help him. And we helped him with another one. And he helped me that night. My brothers and sisters, they ain't none of us so big and tough and bad that we don't need a friend once in a while to help prop us up, brother. To just help prop us up. I know I got friends in here this morning. If I really, really needed it, I could call you and say, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a mess. I need help. I know you would. Now, that's a blessing to know. And you know the same way it goes with me. That's how God comforts us is through our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, when you really get in trouble, when you really get sick, you know who's going to be at your, at your hospital is your family, your brother and sister and your mom, dad. That's who will be there. And the church family's next. They're just like that, brother and sister in Christ. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, many people feel closer to their church brothers and family and sisters than they do their literal, physical brothers and sisters in Christ in, in the flesh. He comforts us through the work of his brother and sister in Christ. Lastly, I'll say this and I'm through. He comforts us through the promise of the second coming. No song said, oft times the day seems long. Our trial's hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But there is one in heaven who knows our every care. Let Jesus solve your problems. Just go to him in prayer. And the, the chorus says, it will be worth it all. And no matter what you're going through today, no matter how bad it is, I can promise you on the authority of the word of God, there is a better day coming, child of God. Look up, Jesus is coming. Hallelujah, brother. It'll be better by and by, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's comforting this morning. Listen, you tell me anywhere you could get something better than that this morning. God, if you went to a bar in Hickory and said, I'm just gonna go get drunk. Boy, you're a genius for doing that, ain't you? Boy, you're, you're, and that's really gonna solve your problems. You might forget them for a couple of hours. When you sober up, they're bigger than they was before you got drunk. And you're, you can't tell me nothing no better than say, child of God, look up, because Jesus is gonna come one of these days and all of our problems are gonna be over. You know, I read about the Titanic. When the Titanic sank, when that thing went down, y'all, that was, you know, here it is, a hundred and ever how many, 110 or ever how long it's been, I don't know, years later, and they're still talking about that. That's a pretty big event, still talking about it 100 years later. And you still, it's constantly, some documentary, somebody fig figured this out, somebody found that, somebody discovered something else. They said that thing was, Labeled the unsinkable ship. It cannot sink. You know that. You know that story. They, it's built over there in Belfast, Ireland. And they said 16 men of the church there in Belfast were on that ship when it sank, and all the town's people knew it. And when word came back to, that, to Ireland that the Titanic went down, the mayor of Belfast said he never saw such grief. Strong men on the streets were clasping their hands, bawling, not even speaking to each other. Grown, strong men. They said they never would have believed it could have happened. And then, in a church service not long after that, the preacher got up to a packed house of widows, orphans, and brokenhearted loved ones and preached on the real, only, one sinkable ship. Talk about the old ship of Zion. He said, this one ain't going down. This one ain't going down. Y'all, we're living in a bad, bad, bad world. Things happen on a weekly basis that just shocks us. It's unbelievable. You hear it all, you hear it every week. Good night. Uh, I don't know how it got on my phone, but there's something on my phone that ever, ever. 30 minutes, something pops up there, like Burke County. You, this one's arrest, arrested for methamphetamines. This one's arrested for cocaine. Me and, me and that went to, uh, on bus route yesterday. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's one I thought I was going to get shot last week. We went back to the same place. And I told Nate, I said, you're going to knock on the door today. you got the gun. And he had one sticking out of his pocket right here. And uh, I, don't, I don't carry a gun. And he, he, he said, all right. So he knocks on the door. And this boy opens the door, and it's so pitiful. 
purple all over here. He said he got bit by a brown, we call him brown recluse, and thing. And it, I said, my goodness, some things out in this kind of weather. He said he's sleeping in a tent over there somewhere. And these people live outside all over the place over there. In tents, they're out there right now. And uh, Nate said there's a guy sitting in there smoking a crack pipe. I didn't see him. I saw a big old dog about that high. And I got to thinking, I thought, you know what? This world ain't getting better, y'all. My generation growing up, we never locked the house or the cars either. And the generation before us, when the Andy Griffith generation and all them, they didn't, those people didn't even have a key to their house. Didn't even have locks on it. That's hard for us to imagine nowadays, ain't it? You can't leave a weed eater laying down nowadays. Somebody grabbing and say, oh, this world's bad. But let me tell you something that'll comfort you. Any minute, any day, any hour, the trumpet's going to sound and call us out of here. Amen. Buddy, that'll comfort you. That'll comfort you. Next time you think everything's terrible and you're not going to make it, just look at it this way. This may be the last day you ever have to put up with this junk. You may never have to go see that old ugly boss woman again. <laughs> you, you may never have to face that old mean tenant landlord. You may never have to uh, go to that, uh, have to deal with that mess, that mean neighbor. It, it'll all be over Amen. by this time tomorrow. That's how he comforts us through the promise of these coming again. Let's stand together. Let's stand together and bow our heads for prayer, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed. She's coming to the piano. I don't know what your need is this morning. Maybe there's somebody here that really just needs to get right with the Lord. You say, Brother Danny, I've been battling this for a long time. And I know what I need to do. I need to get down there and get my heart right with God. You just come on right now. This is the invitation. We're not going to sing. You just come on right now. Come on. Come on right now. Come on. Mamas, dads, husbands, wives, boys, girls, teenagers. That's right. That's right. Fill it up. Fill up the altar this morning. Maybe even about half backslid. And you might just say, Preacher, I need help from the Lord this morning. I need a good touch from the Lord. Come on, let's get in here and pray this morning. Ain't nothing to be shy over. Don't be embarrassed. Get in this altar and say, Lord, I'm going to get back in there, preacher. I'm going to get back in there. Hallelujah. I'm going to get back in there for the glory of God. I'm going to get back on fire for the Lord. This, this world ain't got nothing for me. This world ain't got nothing I'm interested in. Amen. You come on right now. Come on. That's right. That's right. This old world won't do nothing but disappoint you. Chew you up, spit you out, buddy. I'm glad there's a comforter. I'm glad the comforter has come. The comforter has come. Will you let him help you today? Will you let him help you today? Will you? He, he, he will. He will if you'll let him. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We're going to pray. Anybody else? Come on. Anybody else? Maybe you're here this morning you've never been saved. You'd like to be saved. You want to know that you're a Christian. You want to know you're going to heaven when you die. Why don't you come? Let somebody take the Bible and let's settle this issue. Will you do that, ma'am? Will you do that, sir? Just come on right now. Just get up and come right now. Get out and come right now. Let's settle this issue once and for all. Will you do it? Will you do it? Lord will help you if you will. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, that you'd bless every single person on this altar today. God, I don't know the need, but you do. If it's sin, if it's problems, if it's burdens, if it's sickness, if it's death, if it's divorce, if it's pain, if it's sorrow, if it's doubt, if it, if it's, whatever it is, God, help them right now. Be their comforter, Father, I pray. Oh, Lord, do what ought to be done this morning. Save lost souls. Touch every heart. Lord, I thank you so much for comforting me many, 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 many times when I didn't deserve it, but I sure did need it. And I thank you for that this morning. Hallelujah. God, do what ought to be done in our life. Bless us this morning. Bless everybody. God, meet back with us tonight. God, please, Lord, be in this place full of power and glory here this evening. God, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. Have you in our lives this evening. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. These are still praying this morning. We'll take your time. Don't get in no hurry. Amen. Just keep playing this morning. And these are still going to pray for a minute. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God of all comfort. He's the God of all comfort. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the God of all comfort. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. Got what you needed?